Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you my three to four month journey as to how I learned to code and landed several job offers after doing so. Okay, so I'm going to speak about how I learned to code in kind of the second half of this video, but the first bit is giving you guys a little bit of my background, who I am as an individual, my education, my job, my previous job experience before learning how to code, etc. So I grew up in a quite modest environment. I mean, my, both my parents are immigrants, my dad's a software engineer, and my mom is an artist. Now, I know you're probably saying, okay, his dad's a software engineer, he's a coding prodigy. That's not the case at all. My dad always tried to teach me how to code. I never gave it much thought. I always said, I don't care for it. I don't care about CSS. I don't care about HTML. And I definitely didn't care about PHP. So that's kind of my family and my upbringing. I never knew how to code and I never want, was interested in learning how to code. Okay, so what about university? Well, I come from a business background, as in I have a business degree, which is a degree that costs a lot of money, but pretty much qualifies you for nothing. So during my time in school, I thought I wanted to be an investment banker. I was driven, I heard that they make a lot of money, it came quite naturally to me, so that's what I thought I wanted to do. Now, I should have taken the warning signs, because during my second year, or my second summer at university, I did an internship at a private equity shop. That was miserable, it was horrible, I didn't like it at all. And in my third year, I did another internship at a different private equity shop, and it was okay, but the work was boring, mundane, just pure garbage. And I felt that if I went down that path, I'd probably have early onset dementia by the age of around 40, and by 45, somebody would probably be spoon feeding me. I didn't want to go down, down that route. I wanted something more stimulating, something more interesting. Now, thank God for me, in my last year of university, I gained a very strong interest in cryptocurrency, and that interest took me to a cryptocurrency exchange that operations are run out of Hong Kong. Okay, so where's the coding bit in this? How do you become a coder? How do you teach yourself how to code? I'll get to that in a sec. During my time at this company, I wanted to differentiate myself from other new joiners to the company, other new graduates. So how did I go about doing so? Well, the company uses a very proprietary language called KDB developed by KX Systems. Now, my friends didn't know what this language was. The other graduates of this company didn't know what the language was. And so I felt it would be less intimidating for me to learn this language. Why? Well, because all my other friends knew C++, they knew Python, they knew JavaScript, etc. But they didn't know what KDB was. And so I felt as though if I learned KDB, maybe a little syntax here, a little syntax there, maybe write a little program internally for, for internal use, then that might differentiate with me, differentiate me not only with the other graduates, but also with my friend groups. So that's what I decided to do. And slowly but surely, I started taking on more and more coding related tasks as I started reading more and more into the KDB documentation. Now that ended up leading to me collaborating with a senior KDB developer to develop an open source project or build on an open source project called Q Explorer. But that might be a video or a story for another day. That's not relevant. What's relevant is this. I felt that I wanted to take on more and more coding related tasks and I slowly but surely seeped that idea into other members of this organization. Now unfortunately that didn't work out too well because of bureaucracy, something I can't control. I wasn't able to land myself after this graduate program onto a coding based position and so I decided to simply leave this company. Why did I decide to muster the courage and leave this company? Well, I know myself. I know that I am ambitious, I'm driven, and I'm hungry. And if you're ambitious and driven and hungry and you're currently in a position that you don't like and you want to take that leap to become a self-taught developer, you need to make that leap. Because at the end of the day, if you follow the tips I'm about to give you, that leap will be well worth it. So, Tomer, coding Jesus, how did you figure out or how did you teach yourself how to code? Okay, this is the bulk of the video. So this is how I did it. There are really four things that I did. Books, videos, lead code problems, and pet projects. Learn, learn, practice, apply. Those four points correspond to the four things that I just mentioned. Okay, now how did I do so and how did I pick which language I want to learn? Right, that's the beginning of the self-taught journey. So what I did was this. I asked myself, what do I like? Well, I like finance, I still have an interest in finance, and I have previous experience at a cryptocurrency exchange. I don't want to become a front-end developer, that's boring. I don't care about creating websites. I don't care about making buttons nice and writing 300 page documentation as to why a button should be moved one pixel over. That's not for me. What I feel, what I end up doing is doing research as to which languages are used in back-end applications in the finance industry. And what I realized is that C++ is a gold standard for the finance industry. 
and a pretty interesting discipline in the finance industry is high frequency trading. So I told myself, why don't I pick up a book and see if I like C++? So that was my first step. Locked myself in a room for 10 to 12 hours a day and read a book, a 300 to 400 page book on C++. That involved me learning the syntax, learning inheritance, learning polymorphism, learning object-oriented programming, learning what static is, learning what volatile is, etc. And at the end of those three to four days, just cramming through that book, I realized that I really like C++. It's a language that I enjoy writing, and I want to dive deeper into that. So that's when I committed myself to learning C++ after those initial three to four days. So what did I do next? Well, you can only read books before, for so long before your, your mind just melts and it doesn't absorb as much knowledge as, as you'd like. So what I decided to do is mix up my reading regime with a regime of watching videos. Now, I decided to subscribe to Pluralsight. I consider it a more legit Udemy. And Pluralsight offers you learning paths you can go down. So I like C++ and I decided to do the learning path, the C++ learning path on Pluralsight. Now, what that entails is starting off with beginner videos, that teach you how to program, teach you data structures, teach you algorithms, teach you a bit about networking, etc. And moving from those beginner videos to intermediate videos to advanced videos while still having books by my side and reading through maybe 100 pages a day, doing 10 to 12 hours a day, no weekends. Because if you commit yourself to doing this in three months, you're not going to have weekends. You might have one day to rest every month, but other than that, you need to commit yourself to this. So that was my regime. That was my regime for the first month and a half, maybe two months. Half books, half videos, doing practice problems and applying myself. Okay, now at around, at around the two month mark, I committed myself to starting to interview. Now to interview, you need to understand data structures and algorithms. So to apply the knowledge that I learned through data structure and algorithms books, what I did was lead code problems. What every computer science graduate does, what every bootcamp graduate does, lead code problems and just grinding through them. Now guys, I remember doing one lead code problem a day, taking an hour on a lead code problem, and I just told myself, this is so hard. Even the easy problems, I said, this is so hard, I can't do it. But I just ended up pushing through them. I did one problem a day, and that one problem a day turned into two problems a day, which ended up turning into 10 problems a day. Now that one problem a day, I spent the last hour of my 10 hour regime working on, but eventually I started pushing lead code more and more into my routine and pushing back or pulling back a bit on books more and more because I wanted to have a split of let's say 50% learning, 50% lead code by the time I start interviewing. And so slowly but surely I started integrating more and more lead code problems into my, my routine. Now I, re I remember at the beginning thinking, ah, this is so hard. I don't know what recursion is. Recursion is so advanced. Like I don't know what recursion is. Oh my God. Now I look back at that and the easy problems that took me an hour now take me 30 seconds. So don't be discouraged. Push through them. If you need to, look at the answers at certain algorithmic problems or certain problems on lead code and see how it's done so that you gain a fundamental understanding of what dynamic programming is or what recursion is and how you can apply it to your lead code problems. Okay, so what did I do to land now interviews? So I have some knowledge. How did I go about knowing I was ready to interview and how did I land and succeed at those interviews? Okay, so how do you know you're ready? You don't. You're never ready, guys. You never are ready to interview. And that's the whole point of interviewing. It's to get your feet wet to understand what you do well and what you do poorly in. If you can do that and you can learn from your interview failures at the beginning, then you can do great at interviews later down the road. Now what I suggest is interview at companies you don't want to actually get a position at first so that you can see how the interview process works, you can get your feet wet, you can be less nervous such that when you interview at the companies you want to work at, you already understand how the process works and you're more comfortable. Okay, now a big part of interviewing is not only the algorithmic problems, you should be comfortable doing those via the lead code regime that you've implemented into your daily routine, but how you differentiate yourself as a self-taught developer against computer science graduates and against boot campers. Okay, the first point of differentiating yourself is understanding that a computer science degree isn't as intimidating as you think. Now, I am by no means shitting on computer science to people with computer science degrees. I work with a lot of them and I work with a lot of self-taught developers. But what you need to realize is that I'd say about half of computer science graduates don't know how to reverse a string without calling the dot reverse method on a string. So it's not as intimidating as you think. Same thing for boot campers. Okay, so now that you understand that positioning yourself as a self-taught developer isn't as intimidating as you initially thought, you need to now differentiate yourself in terms of what do you do that these people don't, okay? 
So what did I do? This is a story about me, my journey, what did I do? So I built up a portfolio of pet projects. Believe it or not, many boot campers and many computer science graduates do not have a portfolio of pet projects. So what were my pet projects? Well, I have three pet projects. The first one is I developed an algorithm to crack a Jane Street puzzle. Now, if you don't know what Jane Street puzzles are, you can go Google it. In general, they are very well known in the finance stream, the stream that I wanted to get into, and they are puzzles that people spend a bunch of time trying to crack. There are thousands of applicants, and maybe only 40 people get their name on the leaderboard and actually end up cracking the puzzle. So I wrote an algorithm to crack the Try Try Again puzzle in October. Link in the description below if you're interested in that algorithm. Okay, the second thing I did was I built a 2D platformer using a C++ library or a framework, whatever you want to call it. And I think the framework was called S SFML. I think that's what it's called, I may be wrong. But I built a 2D platformer called Cave Story. Or I didn't build it, I recreated it. So I rebuilt it. Um, and that was very interesting. I mean, it was an adventure for me because I f saw how I can apply C++ concepts to make things move on my screen, to build a video game that would be interesting for other people to play. And I actually introduced that portfolio project to my interviewers while I was interviewing and they actually played that game alongside me and it just helped me bond and get closer to the interviewer, which I think helped increase my chances at actually landing that offer that I was aiming for. Okay, that's my second pet project. What was my third pet project? Well, like I said, I was gunning for the, or I am gunning, or I was gunning for the finance stream. Now, the finance stream, if you're gunning for the finance stream, you should probably have a finance-related pet project. And so I did. The finance-related pet project that I had was building a bond pricer. So a program that you give it several metrics and it would spit out a bond price. And once again, that's available on my GitHub. I'll link it below if you're interested to see what that project looks like and the caliber of projects that entry-level positions or interviewers for entry-level positions are looking for. Okay, and that's about it, guys. That is my journey. The journey was books. The journey was videos. The journey included a bunch of lead code problems and slowly but surely integrating more and more lead code problems into my daily routine to the point where I had around 300 to 350 lead code problems under my belt. And the last would be pet projects. Now that's about it guys. I mean, if you're interested in hearing more, more content, more videos, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, throw it in the comment section below. Once again, subscribe to this channel if you like it. Subscribe if you like my content. It's free and give a thumbs up so it can boost the algorithm and so other people can see my video. And hopefully my experience has taught you something. And hopefully by throwing the thumbs up on this video, other people can see this video and learn as well. Thanks guys. Catch you later.